The internet as a platform of community participation has created a new kind of public sphere in these times of mass interconnectedness. There are 4 billion internet users worldwide. China leads this ranking with 829 million internet users followed by India with 560 million users which is about 37% of the total population of India. Women account only for a dismal 33% of India's internet users whereas in the rural areas the percentage is only at 28%. The growth rate of women's participation in these online activities is greater than the growth rate for men. Ever since the advent of social media, women have been accessing it to create economic opportunities for themselves, especially since it allows them to work from home. It is also an important medium of communication for individuals or groups to express their views and most importantly, to run important social cause-driven campaigns on both national and international levels. In the 25 years since the Beijing Convention, the evolution of the digital environment has created powerful tools for women's empowerment, but also new spaces in which violence and abuse against women take place. Social media and digital communication technologies have increased the ease with which abusers can identify and approach victims, and the range of online harassment coercion and sexual exploitation directed at women is diverse and harmful the impact of these abuses pushes women out of online spaces silences their voices and exposes them to the risk of escalating violence both online and in the real world in 2017 amnesty international polled 4000 women in 8 countries 76% of these women had experienced abuse or harassment on a social media platform. 32% women stopped posting content online that expressed their opinion. Online human rights violations for women occur in many forms. Violation of privacy like stalking and revenge porn, violence in the form of rape and death threats and bullying. curtailing freedom of expression in the form of trolling or shaming social media abuses and recruitment for trafficking every year hundreds and thousands of women are trafficked and almost half of the recruitment happens online the internet was by far the most dominant business model sex traffickers used to solicit buyers of commercial sex and was also the most common method for luring victims it can be done in two ways one is that rampant of the chatting and uh, getting uh, uh, knowing each other through social media and then getting close and then you know their uh, uh, promise of uh, giving a good job or marriage or anything another is getting uh, you know knowing each other through some you know middle person and then you know getting close and then uh, procuring some kind of illegal uh, documents photos etc letters is etc there there are there bound to that so now it should be the awareness when everybody is aware so what is needed that awareness module should be uh, changed uh regarding the requirements of the time we have a zero tolerance policy for activities which engage or promote um human exploitation or trade in human beings uh, or trafficking of human beings we work actively with nicmec uh, and the icmec both uh, agencies international agencies which have active collaborations with law enforcement agencies uh whom they share information uh of these violations and that then can creates appropriate enforcement to for the prevention of these crimes women need redressal mechanisms they need civil and criminal options for responding to digital abuse and we need to build the capacity of law enforcement at all levels to understand these crimes and how to effectively respond to them We need to work in networks with strong advocacy for the kinds of coherent global standards and national policies that we want to see. 
And we need these networks to exchange data and information that will help us combat crimes that happen across borders. We need to make sure that parents, teachers, and administrators have the resources they need to ensure that the next generation knows how to keep themselves safe online and how to be responsible digital citizens. In recognizing the urgent need to make the online space secure, the Center for Social Research sought to identify the challenges that young users of these platforms face and train them in aspects of online safety, responsible communication and counter speech through our project Social Surfing and Twe Surfing. Social Surfing encompasses 450 workshops across the country interacting with 35,000 students about online safety. Twe Surfing roped in hundreds of influencers talking about their experiences and propagating for a safer internet. We recognize that this is just the beginning of a long road, especially in times like these, when we have been pushed into the online space because of the unforeseen pandemic leading to a nationwide lockdown. It is the need of the hour to recognize online safety and security as an imperative. We have been working very closely with the Center for Social Research where we have taken their input in terms of how should we be gamifying our education content. We have set up a portal which is called We Think Digital, which basically equips uh, in multiple Indian languages how women and children can keep themselves safe. This is a continuing journey uh, and we expect that we'll be doing a lot more working with the experts in the community as well as hearing from our users on what we should be doing in terms of uh, policy refinement as well as our enforcement measures. Through We Think Digital, a project in collaboration with Facebook, we are connecting with students to exponentially scale our impact in the realm of online safety and security. The webinar which was conducted by the CSR team and uh, was very interesting, interactive and helpful. It taught us about the cyber bullies and cyber crimes which are happening on a daily basis. And I, I appreciate the efforts taken by uh, Jyoti Didi, Shruti Didi and Akanksha Didi for conducting such webinars. Thank you. Thank you so much for a great session and it was pretty easy to uh, grasp through and pretty enriching I think in that too. So thank you. Just how we real life this is impact here. हम ऑफन भूल जाते हैं कि वर्चुअल वर्ल्ड में भी वही चीजें हमें उतनी लेवल में मेंटली इंपैक्ट कर सकती हैं इसलिए हमें किसी में हम और फिर हमें कभी-कभी जैसे मैंने भी रियलाइज किया कि जैसे आपने शेयर करने का बोला था ना कि कुछ भी फोटो पोस्ट कर या कुछ भी शेयर कर तो अपने फ्रेंड्स से उनका कंटेंट मांगना तो कंटेंट कितना इंपॉर्टेंट है सोशल मीडिया प्लेटफार्म में बिकॉज़ हमें लगता है कि हां इतनी बड़ी चीज नहीं है बट दूसरे के लिए बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट हो सकता है we look forward to our journey in making the online space a secure and an inclusive one. Centre for Social Research is the gender think tank from India and we have organised this global policy dialogue because India and Indians are one third of the total internet users globally. But unfortunately, Indians are not really part of the global policy forums, the discussions about the different legal frameworks. So, so it's very important that we are included at every single platform and also the voices which are emerging of concerns which is coming from women, from children, uh, being used, exploited, all kinds of issues, violence against women that we are experiencing, trafficking and also the issues which, which is in a way uh, working as a positive force where people are being able to use it very effectively. We should be able to hear all that and that is why all the ideas, all the suggestions and, and your advice is going to go a long way in formulating the policy that we want to present to all uh, online players. We at CSR are working hard towards making the cyberspace a secure one. In our attempt to do so, we have created an online safety toolkit which is a one-stop guide for everything related to online safety. 
Check out the description box below for a link to our online safety toolkit along with the link to our website to know more about what we do.